Good afternoon. Are you interested in water harvesting? Well, we've done some water harvesting at my house. My name is Tom Crawford, and I'm going to show you how we do water harvesting in the Tucson area, where we get very strong monsoon rains in the summertime. You can see our little sign here, this home harvests the rain, and this was given to, to my family after we put in a catchment basin and the Tucson Water Company paid us $500 in a check to help defray the cost of creating the water catchment basin. What you see behind me was all bladed off in, in uh, 2013 when the house was built. And you can see what a beautiful landscaping we now have as a result of water harvesting. Now we have used drip irrigation to get the trees growing, but then once they get up to about this size, we turn off the drip irrigation and they are getting all of their, rain, their water from the rain. So let me just, if you'll walk with me, I'll show you where the berm is that was made by a small bobcat machine by our landscaper. Okay. The berm starts right here on the east side of the house and as you, I'll walk along on top of the berm and to my right is the catchment basin. To the left is the normal lay of the land. So we have, we have dug out maybe six or eight inches deep this catching place to my right. We'll walk along here and catchment basin and you can see that mostly grasses and a little bit of, of uh, triangle leaf fursage have taken, have taken root here. But you see we have a small saguaro, we have a mesquite tree, we have volunteer globe mallow which has these beautiful orange flowers in the spring. And we have Palo Verde trees. There's one over there. And this is a Palo Verde tree. This is a blue Palo Verde. And it doesn't have leaves right now, but when the water comes, it will leaf out. Now I want to show you an important aspect of making a catchment area. When the water fills up in this catchment area, it is going to go out of the catchment area and what we want to do is prevent it eroding the top of the berm and so what we've done is we have put three about one inch PVC pipes here and the PVC pipes take the water under the top of the berm and take it into an area where we put rocks and that allows us to have the excess water go off into the street, down the street, and then into the local wash. So none of the water is wasted. Now, um, I want to show you why we have to have, or why we chose to have, this catchment basin. This shows rainfall annual rainfall month by month here in Tucson. It's these dashed lines. The Yuma, Arizona lines are the dark lines. So 25 uh, centimeters, sorry, millimeters is about 2.5 centimeters. 2.5 centimeters are an inch. So right across here is about an inch of rainfall. So you can see 
we have January, February, March, and then in April, May, and June, we have almost no rain here. Almost none. And then all of a sudden in July, we get maybe three inches of rain on average. And August and September are also our rainy months. So it's during July, August, and September that this basin fills up and slowly soaks in to benefit all the beautiful plants you see with our landscaping. Now if you'll come around with me, I want to show you the other side. Here's our fourth overflow tube. And if you come over here, you'll see that the overflow from this tube comes under the top of the berm and it comes out here and we put rocks to prevent erosion. And come over here and I'll show you what we've done with these three pipes. Our homeowners association doesn't like to see plastic pipes. So we've put some little rocks here just to camouflage them a bit. You see? And if we pull these out, you can see here, here, and here is where the water comes out when the catchment basin is full during our rainy season. And we can put these back. They don't impede the water, but they make it look a little nicer. And as a final note, we have uh, planted dahlias down here, and they benefit from the water retention. These are a beautiful ground cover, and they attract bees, as you can see. We have a volunteer desert, a marigold right there, and we have planted several trees, which have been here for about five years. And my wife prunes them, and they're looking really great. And then we have, we have some agave over there with the little pups that are growing around the mother plant. We planted over here on the berm a Mexican bird of paradise. And this is doing really well. It's beginning to leaf out. And we have planted hedgehog cactus and prickly pears throughout. And we have volunteer uh, uh, creosote. So I hope that this gives you a better idea of how uh, you can uh, collect water during a rainy season when the, the downpour exceeds the ability of the soil to absorb the water. So you have to collect it and let it slowly sink in. Sink, sink in. So what you see behind me here is a combination of trees that we have planted and volunteer grasses and shrubs. So if you would like more information, feel free to contact me at, at my website, which is globalagronomy.com. And I'll spell it out for you. It's G-L-O-B-A-L a-g-r-o-n-o-m-y dot com and if you go out to YouTube you can see some of my other videos by just simply typing in global agronomy. Thanks for your interest. Have a great day.